I have spent so much time and money on asking other people to teach me things. And you know, there's times when you want to learn something and you're just waiting on somebody to give you their time because they said they would teach you or help you with something. I've had so many times where I just am waiting on the other person to have time to be with me to walk me through it, right? But now I know I, if I have a question, I can figure out the answer. I don't have to wait on anybody else. I'm gonna share something and it's about research, but just hang on a second because I used to be very triggered by the word research. I didn't think anything that had to do with research was gonna be interesting. I thought it was just, you know, very technical, very, I don't know, Yale University type of <laughs> stuff that was like beyond me. I would just shut off at the first mention of the word research and I would kind of zone out and be completely uninterested. But I'm gonna share something with you, a little story. And the same thing has me thinking about AI and you know the future of careers and where humans will be as far as automating things and where are humans gonna be needing to put their skills. Like back in the day we had to figure out, we had to put in the time to trace the outline of a human, right? If we wanted to cut the background out of a photo or a video. But now with the automation and technology that's available, we can just do a quick button and it takes five seconds to remove the background on something, right? So obviously we don't need to put time into learning and perfecting the skill of removing backgrounds because it's automated for us. So where do we need to be focusing our energy on learning and skills. This story starts with someone asking me not too long ago if I'm good at research. Like I said, I used to be very triggered by the word research. I I didn't think I was good at research. I didn't think I was at all interested in it. It was just completely outside of my world, I guess, because I've always felt like I really struggled at it. And whenever I tried to research something, I could never find the answers that I was looking for, mostly obviously using Google. And it always felt like such a waste of time having to search and search and come up with different questions to ask Google and never getting the results that I was necessarily looking for. And as a very productive, efficient type of person that wants to make the best of all of my time that I could possibly can, I just, oh, having to research things was just, oh, I don't like the learning curve of things because it feels like such a waste of time. For example, when I've downloaded new video editing software, I can learn so fast from someone else showing me how something goes, right? But if I have to research it, it takes a lot longer. So the learning curve and knowing, okay, I should be able to make this background blurry in five seconds flat. It should not be hard, but I'm having to search through all the menus, all the buttons, and I cannot find the blur button. It's like, oh, it just irks me because I feel like I'm wasting my time. I'm spending 20 minutes doing a five second task, basically. So this person who asked me this question of whether I'm good at research, it was actually someone who wants to hire someone to research something for a project that they're working on. And I just said, no, I am not interested. I do not like research. I'm not good at it. No, I'm not the person you're looking for. <laughs> I definitely looked at research from the perspective of school because I mean, I've been graduated for a while now, but that's the only context I had for the word research was at school, they ask you this question, you have to do a research project, you have to write a three page paper, you know, all these boring stuff that I did not like around subjects I wasn't interested in. And again, I would try to find the answers and Google couldn't give me the answers because I couldn't figure out how to ask the right questions. I think recently I graduated from a film program. It was a very self motivated program where initially I didn't really think it was worth my investment because of, you know, they say you get out what you put in. And this was very much that type of concept. And I just wasn't putting in, so to speak. But over the course of the program, I did find myself researching so many things. My homework was to write a film script. Well, the term is screenplay, but basically it's a movie in written form instead of video form. Well, I had to figure out where to start. <laughs> I had to figure out what parts you write in each act. What would you put in act one? What would you put in act two? What would you put in act three? What is the opening scene that you want to have? What kind of things you need to do to hook 
a viewer and make it interesting right from the start. I researched how to actually write the script and format it in a way that was you know, the Hollywood standard, they call it. You have to have certain margins. You write the dialogue in certain ways. There's certain parts that you capitalize and there's just so many rules. There's so many things about formatting a screenplay. Then when I started writing my own, I started having questions like, how do I actually need to write this in a way that you can visualize it? Because if you read a book, yes, there's visualization, but the way a screenplay is written is very different than the way a book is written. There's not a lot of long descriptions about things like there are in books. So, so many things. As I started writing my own, I had to research different things and learned more and more about writing a screenplay. Then I had a homework that was to actually capture some still shots with my camera actually taking pictures in order to kind of get an idea of lighting, experimenting with low light and high lights and key lights and backlights and blurriness, you know, depth of field. And I had to learn about ISO, learn about the different lighting techniques, learn about the settings on my camera, learn about the effects that each type of lighting might display. <laughs> when my homework was make a storyboard or make a sizzle reel or make a pitch deck for my film, I had to research these things. What does it mean? What do you put into it? What kind of things make it better? What kind of things do you want to avoid? So much research. So much research. The ebook that we had was not very in depth as far as specific, like do this step one, step two, step three. It was very much overview and kind of like, you need to know this and you need to do this. But it was kind of on me as a student to research the things, learn how it actually works and what are the actual steps I needed to get the finished product done. So this program, for the most part is what taught me a few things and the first thing is that it's not that i dislike research if i give myself permission to spend the time learning something i actually really enjoy it i'm a very growth self-development learning type of person i love to grow and expand and learn so first of all like i said i'm very of you know i like to be productive and efficient with my time so if I feel like I have 10 other things to do, I don't have time to spend an hour on trying to blur the background of my photo or video. But if I give myself permission to spend the time to learn something, it's perfectly fine. I'm like, I'm gonna spend an hour learning how to <laughs> blur the background. It's not, it didn't, it doesn't actually take that long, you know? You get what I'm saying, that I just needed to give myself permission, like, especially with this film program, I was like, I'm a student, I have a student mindset. I'm going to spend the time I need to actually learn these things and practice them. So I actually enjoy research, <laughs> I realized. And the other thing is that it is not true that I am bad at research. If I have a question and I type it into Google and Google does not give me the answer that I was looking for, I need to figure out how to formulate the question in a different way so that it can give me a different answer. And this is a continuous learning process, just figuring out the right ways to ask questions. And I've always known I was really good at picking new things up and learning stuff. If I have somebody, like I said, next to me, just showing me step-by-step step how to do things, well, research is the same. It's just that you have to figure out your own questions to ask, in order to find the steps. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same, right? Yeah, you just have to figure out your own questions instead of someone being like holding you by the hand and saying, this is the question to ask. Did that make sense? I knew I was a fast learner in terms of somebody showing me how things work. And now I've learned that I can also learn a lot on my own by being a researcher or having that research mindset <laughs> of a student to just figure things out. I don't have to rely on other people to teach me. I can learn it on my own. But hey, I'm gonna talk a little bit further in the next video about how this epiphany about research <laughs> has become something very valuable in my personal life. And maybe we could say my career life, but since it's self-employed, then I guess it's technically personal. Personal? Business? Okay, see you then. Bye.